will pass 7.15 p.m. and I'll call this meeting to order. Um, if you, as we all know, tomorrow is the one-year anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombings. Um, and I think it's appropriate, appropriate for us to take a mon moment of silence to remember those who lost their lives, were injured, uh, both physically and mentally, um, the first responders, and all the hospital employees who acted so courageously during and in the following days of that tragedy. So please. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I apologize for the interruption, but I'm getting some uh, weird echo from the ACMI speakers. I don't know if it's possible. Do, do you hear the, we're getting a little bit of, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. Testing? Um, no. Testing? Sounds better. better. Yeah, yeah better. that's good. There we go. Thank you very much. And, um, before we get started, I would like to remind everyone that this is being videoed by MC by ACMI, so smile widely when you're on the camera. <laughs> um, and number one, Mr. Kira. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, this uh, agenda item, I'm, I'm here on behalf of uh, the Arlington uh, Tourism and, Educa and uh, <coughs> Economic Development uh, uh, Committee, ATED. Um, uh, Ms. Olsuski, our uh, chair, was uh, not able to be with us this evening, but she did ask that I uh, represent the committee in uh, uh, reminding um, all of you and reminding uh, also all of the, the residents of the various uh, Patriots Day uh, festivities that we have ahead of us next week. <coughs> and with your permission, I'd like to just qu quickly read what uh, Ms. Olsuski has written up for us um, in, in that regard. Um, <clears throat> Arlington will be celebrating Patriots Day on Monday, April 21st. Rise and shine to show your Patriots Day spirit. Join the Monotomy, Monotomy Minutemen in honoring those who lost their lives on April 19, 1775. They will hold a flag raising and burial ground ceremonies beginning at the Town Hall flagpole at 7.15 a.m. March with them to the Jason Russell House and Old Burying Ground. Complimentary coffee and pastries will be available following the event. Visit monotomy.org. The annual Patriots Day Parade will begin at 9.30 a.m. from Brattle Street and continue east down Massachusetts Avenue to Walgreens. The theme for this year's parade is Arlington Patriots Strong, chosen as a reflection of Arlington's past and its present strength in light of the Boston Marathon bombing just one day after last year's parade. Once again, the parade will feature the Shriners, bands, and other favorites. Visit ArlingtonPatriotsDay.org. Visit the site of the fierce fighting on the first day of the American Revolution, the Jason Russell House, 7 Jason Street, will be open for tours from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Admission adults $5, children $2. Visit arlinghistorical.org. And lastly, join the Monotomy Welcoming Committee beginning at 11.30 a.m. at Town Hall. Pack a picnic lunch and eat on the lawn. Enjoy family activities, music by Diane Taraz, and light refreshments while we wait for Lancer reenactors Paul Revere and William Dawes. The event is hosted by the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development and sponsored by Bose Real Estate. Follow the riders on Twitter. Monotomy's waiting. The Twitter handle is at Greet Riders. And visit ArlingtonMa.org. And in that spirit, um, as we have done in years past, I would like to uh, read a proclamation and ask the board, that the board um, in endorse this. Whereas in 1775, Arlington was known as Monotomy, and whereas on the eve of the American Revolution, Paul Revere and William Dawes rode through Monotomy warning the residents that the British regulars were out. And whereas Minutemen and militia from Monotomy and surrounding communities gathered in our town and prepared to meet the regulars in battle on their retreat to Boston. And whereas on April 19, 1775, the fiercest fighting of the day occurred on the plains of Monotomy and 12 patriots, including residents Jason Russell, Jason Winship, and Jabez Wyman lost their lives. And whereas, each year on Patriots Day weekend, Arlington celebrates its history with numerous community events, highlighted by a parade which is one of the largest of its kind in the nation. And whereas, the people of Arlington have shown a commitment to spreading the word regarding our historic heritage 
and assuming our rightful place alongside our neighboring communities in the hearts and minds of American patriots. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, do hereby proudly proclaim that Arlington shall once again be known as Monotomy on April 21st in honor of the important role that our residents played on the first day of the American Revolution and that we urge the residents of our town to celebrate and pay fitting observance of this solemn occasion. And I do so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. We shall be in the monotomy next. <laughs> next Thank you, Mr. Caro, as well as A-Ted and Mr. Bullis for this great event. Um, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, we have appointments, new election workers. Joseph Munzee, Mary O'Neill. Move approval. Second. Any, dis any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Moving on. We have appointments. Uh, appointment of the Deputy Treasurer, Mr. Gilligan. experience, he has supervisory experience, he has a degree in, M in economics and an MBA in finance. Uh, the director of human resources is here, if she's needed to answer any questions, uh, but I'm also here to, to uh, as I said, request the board to confirm that appointment, and uh, Mr. Moore is here to introduce himself to the board and answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Morris, do you want to say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I'll just, I, I was ready to make a motion, but now I'm going to discuss instead. Uh, over in, in March, I had the opportunity to talk to the treasurer and uh, Christine, uh, I mean, excuse me. <laughs> wow, now Karen. Now I love you, Christine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and I was. It's Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I was really happy with the process that was used, and I think that uh, it, it's, it's worth noting. I mean, that's in the memo, but it's worth noting that uh, the deputy town manager was also part of the interview process, and all four of the people doing the interviews said that this was the right choice, and I'm really, I'm, I'm happy to support this motion. Ms. Mahan. Um, I did have a conversation um, with Mr. Gilligan right around the time that, that Mr. Dunn did, um, and I believe I spoke to Ms. Malloy. I'm not sure though, um, and had heard what the process was. Um, they spoke very highly of you, many, many accolades in terms of your experience. Um, I guess I would ask, is it appropriate, not specific to this case, but would it be appropriate for me to ask any new hire when a start date is, or? Oh, can I ask yes. if that? Uh, Mr. Morse is slated to begin Monday, May 5th, on confirmation by the board. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kira. Thank you very much, and th thank you for uh, coming to, to Arlington. I was also impressed with the process and impressed with your, um, you know, financial credentials as well as the fact that you've you've had uh, supervisory experience. It looks like in all three of the positions that are listed here. Am I correct in that? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think you probably heard that we we compete a lot with our neighbors to the west. I'm glad to be stealing someone from Somerville as well. <laughs> I just hope they told you you have to wear a tri-corner hat when you come. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Well, I'll, I'll look forward to supporting the, uh, the, the, the appointment, and uh, we'll welcome to Ar Arlington. Great. Mr. Greeley. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gilligan, <coughs> congratulations on your re-election. Thank you. Mr. Morris, uh, and very impressed, Stephen, with you, Karen, um, Andrew. Who else was on that committee? Uh, sorry? Uh, I think they've just done a superb job. How many candidates originally, Steve? Uh, we began with 37 applicants and resumes. Uh, we interviewed 13, including quite a number of in-house candidates within the town. Uh, we, 
uh, had three semifinalists, and from the three semifinalists, uh, Mr. Morris, uh, as cream rose to the top. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to um, emphasize to the board that every step of the way, as we each completed our reviews and worksheets, we were unanimous right down the line. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled um, with Mr. Morris and what he's going to bring to the top line. That's impressive. Uh, Mr. Morris, you might find we're not always unanimous in this town. Sometimes people disagree with me. I mean, you know, who can figure those things out, right? <laughs> By any chance, did we meet at State Street? Because you do look familiar to me, and they're a very large client of mine. Um, it's, it's possible. It's did you know Doug Miller, for example? Uh, I did not know. Okay, Jay Cardi, that name ring a bell? No, it doesn't. Well, they were minor players at State Street. I'm sure you were. <laughs> I'm sure you Wait, were. Wait, are they clients of Way, you? way above pay grade. <laughs> Actually, they work for me now, but, uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I only have one final question. Do you sing? Oh, jeez. Yeah. I don't. You don't. No. Stephen, you didn't ask that in the interview? Uh, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> if Morse is willing to take lessons from the selector, you can add that no. to his skill set. We have a singing group. I really am thrilled to welcome you to the town. Thank you very much. We look forward to working with you. Thank you, everyone. I, um, I echo my colleague's statements. I, I really like the process that uh, you went through to be hired. I thank you for doing that, Mr. Gilligan. My pleasure. Um, <coughs> may, may I ask, how, how did you find that Arlington had an open position? I'm curious, uh, moving forward, for the, this process seemed to work really well, and I'm uh, curious. Yes, yeah, so I follow along with the Massachusetts Collectors and Treasurers Association. It's posted on that. That, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, any comments from the crowd? No. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five well, nothing vote. Thank you. Welcome to Arlington. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board, for your unanimous vote. Very much appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Moving on. Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is anyone here for a citizens open forum? Please come forward. Welcome. Thank you for welcoming me. And um, I want to uh, say I appreciate Ms. Kapalka got back to me. I had sent a letter uh, to your attention, and I just wanted to flag it for the board um, because I haven't raised a concern with the board before us, so I don't know what the next steps are. It's just regarding um, my curiosity about the relationship uh, between the town and High Rock Church that was described pre in depth in the recent Arlington Advocate story about um, funding for a particular town position. I looked for some information about how that, those finances work and what the relationship is, and I couldn't find any information. So I just put it to the board uh, for your discretion. I don't know what form that would take, uh, but I would love to get some clarification on that. Great. Thank you. We'll be back to you. Any further discussion? No. Moving forward. Traffic rules and orders slash other business. Discussion. Lexpress route. Arlington Heights. Ms. Rebecchi. Rebecchi? Rebecca. 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 Sorry about that. Nice to have you back. Yeah, it's in a row. I'm, yes, I'm back to see you soon. Um, well, thank you for agreeing to hear my request this evening. Um, I think it's been session set. My name is Jeanette Rebecca. I'm the transportation manager for the town of a big part of my job is overseeing our Lexpress bus service, which is operated by the town of Lexington uh, for the past 30 years. Um, we operate Monday through Friday, 6.30 to 6.30, and it's a stop-on-demand service. We do not have any set stops, so residents can flag it down um, anywhere along the route. So a 
Mr. Chaplain. And, and just to add um, uh, to what was just mentioned, what, what our intention was tonight was, just as Jeanette just said, to get the feedback of the board uh, and uh, also give us a chance over the next couple of weeks to talk to business uh, owners in the Heights to get their feedback before formally recommending at the next meeting of the board, uh, if the board so chooses, to accept the proposal. Uh, and there was an email, I think, on the board members' desks tonight uh, with at least one uh, business owner from the Heights expressing support for this concept and thinking that it would be a benefit to the business district. So just uh, I wanted to add that frame to the conversation. Thank you. Discussion from the board. Mr. Carroll. I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm thrilled. And I, can I just note that ACMI, we're still getting that echo. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about this at, at first glance. I'm happy to see it. You know, one of the business owners is actually really the, the pretty much the leader of the business community up in the uh, Heights did did write to us um, in support of this I, over the weekend. Um, this was the one item in the packet that I received correspondence on as well from um, residents who are very uh, interested in this. Um, not only because it serves Les Lexington residents to bring our folks up <laughs> your way, but uh, hopefully we'll have some uh, traffic coming back this way as well. Um, and uh, I, I will take the opportunity, um, although you're here specifically on this proposal, just to, to say that the timing is propitious. Um, the Master Plan um, Advisory Committee did present the transportation working paper last Thursday, and they're um, actually accepting comments right now, I think through the end of the month, on, on this. And I know that one individual who contacted me in support of this um, transmitted that also further on. So um, thank you very much for bringing it uh, to our attention. Ms. Garrett, Ms. Mahan. Um, I, I just want to clarify that the way I read um, the Lex Press was one directions, that from Lillian Street, the first time they come into Arlington is Lowell, right on Lowell, right on Park, right on Mass Ave. Correct. And now, where would how would the stops work? Are they designated stops? I mean, obviously there must be some sort of signage. Um, what, what is the agreement with that? Um, we actually don't have any designated signage outside in Lexington Center at Depot Square, which is our main hub where all routes begin and end. And we also haven't had a sign at the Burlington Mall. Um, at this time, we were not going to sign any particular stops because that's the nature of our service is a stop on demand. And passengers simply can each just stand on the side of the road, flag it down and give it a taxi or request the driver to stop and drive them pull over in a safe location. Okay. How, um, how are we going to, besides we're talking about it at this meeting, and I know somebody's here from the advocate, but what further outreach so we can let the residents of Arlington know that that's an uh, a opportunity? Uh, great question. Well, I guess the next steps in terms of our process, we have a public comment period open until April 25th. This is a substantial change in our service, um, and we do want to have the residents to weigh in. So this is by no means a final draft of the route. Um, the Lexington Board of Selectmen will approve the final version next month, and then at that point, we, I will contact um, the staff for Arlington just to propose the final version, and then from there, we can certainly work on plenty of advertising to let Lexington and Arlington residents know that this is now a cross service. Um, sorry, uh, if you could wait till the boards, and we'll bring it up after. Thank you. I think Mr. Greeley. Mr. Greeley. Oh, oh, I thought Joe was next. But uh, you always bring us such good news. We want to adopt you here. And, I <laughs> you. and, and others, I'm sure, are smarter than me on this. How is this funded? And you're not looking for any funding from Arlington to do this? Perhaps I should have, I guess. <laughs> no, but at this time, no. <laughs> this will be, um, I like to think any new change is always uh, kind of a pilot period. So we'll definitely re examine the route next year and see how things are going. And we can certainly reassess if there's adequate ridership to support this. And we can always uh, revisit this conversation in the future. God bless you. <laughs> Wholeheartedly support. I just wanted to um, add that this change was obviously I am an Arlington resident and I don't have any competing
being addressed that this was a destination that Lexington residents really wanted to go to. They really wanted to visit Arlington Heights for errands and appointments, as well as to make um, a new team bus connection with the bus way. Fantastic. That's great. To Next hear. year, they'll want the center. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Strong support. Um, thank you. No, I was happy to read through this too. Um, I did have one question. You know, it does cut through some residential neighborhoods. Um, have you had any feedback from people who might live in Lexington residential neighbors, neighborhoods? And do they like the program? Do they see it as an increase in traffic? Or Well, I would count it as perhaps a decrease in traffic that this takes cars off the roads. And now we're opening up public transit service to areas of town that are currently served by neither of us. That's great to hear. Um, I, I would also support this as well. Uh, and I look forward to having you come back here in a few weeks with some good news from the Lexington Board of Selectmen, I hope. Okay. Thank you. Do you need a letter from us or something? Yeah. Would you like uh, a um, vote or? Kevin, sure, I think that might be helpful if you could um, provide just a formal vote of support for um, Lexpress coming to Arlington Heights. So moved. Second. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Did this oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm new at this. Um, any word from the crowd? Come on forward. Yes, please. So much like Minuteman is puts on fair burden on Arlington, so does the MBTA. So the assessment formula for cities and towns um, is described in Mass General Laws, Chapter 161A, Section 9. 
Arlington is one of the 14 communities. And we pay a per capita assessment that's three times what, say, Quincy pays. So even though Quincy has four red line stops, three MBTA parking garages, a commuter rail stop, more bus lines than us, their town, their city assessment in the MBTA is less than ours. And we have no, no subway stops, no commuter rail, and fewer bus lines. So it's in the state law, but there's an exception. So if any money you spend on a regional transit authority is subtracted from your MBTA assessment. Mm -hmm. So if Lex Express was an RTA, Arlington could essentially get additional service for no extra cost. And so there's a great opportunity here to, uh, you know, the, the formula for assessing cities and towns hasn't changed in decades and nobody's really tried to rectify it. For example, Somerville will pay the same pays the same per capita assessment waiting as we do, and yet they're getting a new green line extension and all kinds of other service um, besides existing data stuff. So I think it's a great opportunity to increase transportation in Arlington, and we can do it at no cost if Lex Express is an RTA and Arlington and Lexington could get together and expand service in our two communities. Thank you. Any further comments? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Five nothing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come back again, Jeanette. Yeah. <laughs> um, next, rehearing warrant article 24, endorsement of CDBG application. Mr. Jeff Lamb. So, this is a uh, quick follow up to last week's discussion in regards to the CDBG budget. Uh, the CDBG program coordinator and the director of planning community development uh, verify that um, they were comfortable with recommending this budget based upon the subcommittee's recommendation and the board's recommendation. And you'll also see included a little bit of a, a more thorough description of each of the programs that are being funded uh, through. So if it is the board's prerogative tonight, uh, we'd be asking for final approval of this for inclusion in the board's report to town meeting. Thank you. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Mr. Greer. Uh, there's no changes, am I correct, from what we saw last meeting? Uh, no, there's no changes from the last meeting. No. Thank you. Any further discussion? Anyone proud? No. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five nine. Next. Final votes and comments. Article 16, bylaw amendment by Venner Road, removal of easement restriction. Um. Discussion. Mr. So, so I just want to make sure, sure Mr. Chaplain, so you feel you've reached an agreement, in, well, we feel like there's an agreement in spirit, but we're not ready to finalize it yet. There's no documented agreement okay. yet, and uh, both town council and I thought that without an actual agreement in hand, the, the board's vote. All right, then I will. And that we would again ask, I'm sorry, that we'd ask the board uh, for final execution once the uh, document was completed. Okay, then I'm gonna move approval, but I'm gonna say that in the comment, the third word is well, and I think we wanna strike that word. I was gonna ask that why you said that. Is that? Take out the word well. I can so certainly the, take out. The board received. I can certainly take out the word well. But may I, why did you put it in? I'm curious. Did you want to, were you saying we were pleased with what we received in terms of? My recollection of the colloquy that took place is that uh, the uh, board seemed pleased with the deal in principle as it had been arranged. Oh, I agree. Uh, so uh, I thought that the, uh, it was reflecting that the board was urging a positive action on it, but I'm certainly happy to strike that word and uh, reflect a more neutral tone. Yeah, I have no problem with removing it. Yeah. I'm just curious why it's I hadn't seen it before. Of course. But we're recommending favorable yeah. action. It says we were received well, it. Well, right? We're actually recommending uh, we'll, we'll, we'll report. report. Yeah. Because we don't have the I know, but I thought you just said he moved favorable action. No, you said you moved we'll report? I know. I, yeah, I moved approval of the, of this comment in the the... The, the language as the language as written, with the exception of that. Okay. Yeah. 
So I'm, I guess I'm anticipating that we will have an opportunity to make a recommendation that we can then substitute before town meeting. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. We, did we have a second? No. So, second. second. Basically, for approval as amended. Uh, yes. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Kevin. Kevin. Thank you, and then Moving on, correspondence received. Um, Donald W. Cash, the Commissioner of Mass DEP, 2014 Sustainable Materials Recovery Program, Municipal Grant Application. Um, Mark Johnston, Department of Housing and Urban Development. FY14 CDBG allocation, and Alan Lawton, who we just heard from, um, 76 William Street, High Rock Church, and recent Arlington Advocate article. Discussion on any of these. Um, I, if the board so chooses, I'd be happy for the board to recommend Ms. Lawton's letter to myself and town council for formulation of a written response that can be yeah. shared with the board before being sent to Ms. Lawton. Thank you. Yes, please. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Second, I'll second. Second, we have a motion and a second. Oh, Ms. Mahan. Well, just on the uh, see from Housing and Urban Development, perhaps someone on the subcommittee or the town manager, just where um, we do receive CDBG and there are three other um, grant programs listed and it says if we would like any help from CDBG, um, there's a way to do that. I'm just curious if, and I know nothing about the, besides reading the words and sort of deducing what the other three programs are, the home, the HOPWA, and the ESG, I just would put it out on the table. Um, if they haven't already been considered, maybe um, through the chairman, the subcommittee with the town manager, Unless he already knows that that's something that we wouldn't apply for, but since they're there, Oh, yeah, I mean, when it, I'd be happy to look into it further. I, I do know that the planning department, whenever there is options or programs available through these funds, that they are always right, ready to apply. But we can, we'll always, you know, be looking in that. And with, with the particular look. bias, if any of these programs um, have inherent in them um, housing for adults with disabilities, intellectual disabilities. I, I mean, I, it may fall under one of those three. But I just think it says if you want to call CPD and redesign the talk about the Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any further discussion? I, I just want to just quickly say I'm glad that the um, <clears throat> the manager is going to uh, you know address the um, some of the mechanisms by which High Rock has um, uh, you know funded a position at, at uh, AYCC I believe um, one of our social workers I just want to say for my, myself for the record that I think that High Rock has been an excellent community neighbor to us as have many of our other faith communities I know they've participated on the response coordination team that you serve on Mr. Byrne. And um, I just want to state that for the record my, my, myself, that um, I, I, would, I would hate for there to be some, um, um, <clears throat> it to be misconstrued that somehow they're, they're doing something un underhanded because that, that nothing can be further from the case. Thank you, Mr. Chiaro. Mr. Greer. And, and this is the first I've heard of them in a relationship to town governance. So I don't, she mentioned she's getting more and more concerned. I'm not familiar with any other, maybe others of you are, but I'm glad uh, Mr. Chaplain and, and Doug will look into it for us and make sure of that. And we understand about the separation of church and state. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Thank you. We had a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. New business. Ms. Kropelka. No, thank you. Doug. Mr. Chaplain? I figure we have plenty of time, so I've got a few items. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, uh, a couple quick ones. Uh, I know I provided the board in their packet uh, information about the $30 million supplementary Chapter 90 program that the governor released last week. Since that time, he's named it the Winter Rapid Recovery Program. Mm. Uh, and we've already executed the contract. Uh, Arlington's allocation is $118,129, which is very significant money, and we're very appreciative that the governor rolled that funding out. 
Uh, so Mike Rademacher and the team in engineering are already planning what they'll spend the money on. It needs to be committed by June 30th for what it will be spent on and then uh, expend, uh, or expended by uh, September 30th. One of the main things we're going to focus on is a complete thermoplastic restriping effort of Mass Ave. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, the winter did a pretty serious number on the striping, especially in the, the new, uh, newly paved parts of Mass Ave. And that's eligible under, so that's one big thing we'll doing. Uh, we'll be doing, and the rest will be dedicated to road maintenance and pothole filling, which um, can always be can always be done. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. you may have said this, and I wasn't paying strict attention. The um, repainting with the thermoplastic um, adhesive paint yeah. Um, yeah. is that something we'll get a list just so we know where they are up and down Mass Ave, or would that be too cumbersome? We're actually, for the first time, going to do it for all striping on Mass Ave. Not oh, just okay. the crosswalks. We're going to do it for center lines and bike lanes. And, and I don't need that. Track. I was just going to look at it in case I. Okay, but if you're doing it for everything, well, I can. You. I can still. Uh, get Only the if it's not list. cumbersome. If it, if don't, I don't want anyone expending any extra time. No, if it's I, I think the list is. Thing, I'd just be curious. I think the list is pretty readily available. I can get Thank that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, another, another quick one, after last week's board meeting, I spoke with the uh, chief of police, and they've had several directed patrols uh, down off of Lake Street uh, on the roads that were discussed last week by the neighborhood, uh, trying to step up enforcement in that area. Um, as we discussed with the, the neighbors, it can't be sort of a daily enforcement, but spot enforcement, hopefully we'll try to get some better compliance with the issues that were raised by the neighbors. Um, two items that are a little more detailed, in regards to the Mass Ave Corridor project, uh, we now have uh, some positive information. Uh, just before I came down to the meeting, I received a call from Representative Garbley. The transportation bond bill, which was the last thing that needed to be finalized to finalize funding to get the project started, was reported out of the conference committee today. So the uh, House and Senate will be voting on it this week, and then once they vote on it, the governor will have 10 days to sign it. So that is very imminent now um, that that will be finalized and we can move forward. Moving from there, we have a pre-construction meeting scheduled with the MassDOT district office as well as the contractor on April 29th. Last week, myself and representatives from the planning department uh, met with business, um, business owners from the Capital Square Association to start getting uh, their feedback on how they want to be communicated with. So, uh, and we've been meeting internally as well, so I feel like we have a very good um, set of desires and uh, plans that we want to bring to MassDOT to start to work with the contractor to make the project as much of a success as we can in terms of the actual construction impacts. So I'll be providing hopefully uh, very shortly much more detailed information to the board, but just in the past 24 hours we've had some very significant um, information uh, come to our attention. Uh, and then the final piece of new business that I will share to some degree with uh, Selectman Dunn and Selectman Caro if they so choose is in regards to the Minuteman School. Uh, so as the board knows, they voted in favor of supporting the revised agreement at this year's town meeting. Uh, and there's been a lot happening within the other 16 or other 15 member communities in recent weeks. Um, I attended a meeting at the State House with legislators from all of the communities, both member and non-member, uh, to talk about the Minuteman issue. Uh, we then learned late last week that Wayland, one of the members, voted against the regional agreement. And then just this morning, there was a meeting hosted uh, at Weston Town Hall uh, with members of boards of selectmen, school committee members, town managers, and administrators from the Minuteman district to try to talk about where we go uh, and how we go forward, given that Wayland voted no. Um, I'll let Mr. Dunn talk a little bit more about where we went from there, uh, but led by uh, a board of selectmen member from Needham, our, our strategy is to uh, consider a resolution offered by Needham to allay the concerns of some of the smaller communities who may not have been interested in passing the revised agreement. Uh, try to get 15 yeses and then go back to Wayland to ask them to reconsider. Uh, so I'll leave it with that and let um, Dan talk a little bit more about it. Great. Um, I think that this is an appropriate time to go out of line in new business. If Cut you, you off, Mr. Greeley. We'll come back to you. That's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that what we're seeing in Wayland and in some of these other towns is that they are very worried that they are being, they're signing on to a new regional agreement that is not as kind to them, which is something that we all like know going in because it's better for us. And the reason it's better for us is because some of these really smaller towns are, would be on the hook for significantly more. Dover quoted that, uh, today that their expenses would go up 84% if they were to uh, stick with it. And so what Dover wants is to get the new agreement and then exit. And they're concerned that once the new agreement happens, they won't be permitted to leave. And I think that there's an element of this that uh, Arlington is more 
educated about Minuteman than other towns because it has it occupies so much of our money and so much of our time that we are and so a lot of these other towns are coming to the realization that we have been at for you know a number of years and so anyway uh, they th there's a sentiment that says you have to let me out of the this before you change it which of course we are not going to go along with because you know, we, we can't change the agreement unless we get what we want. We're not going to just let people out because, you know, it makes it even worse. So uh, what this, uh, the Board of Selectmen in Needham have taken an interesting approach. And Adam was talking about beforehand, it's, it makes a lot of, st is that this, if we did this, we would be Arlington the big bad bully. And if Dover did it, it would be like, you know, this, this town that sends only one student doing it. But Needham is really the middle of the road. So they actually are, they have an opportunity to be something of a broker in, in how this works. And so they are, um, they're asking the boards of selectmen to take a vote to agree to let anybody out, to promise to let anybody out if they try in the first year after the new agreement is, is, is made. And so the way that that plays is, so I'm going to pick on Boxborough for the m moment, is that, if, is that Boxborough selectmen, who have currently voted to recommend against m this agreement, can go back to their town meeting and say, I'm changing my vote. I am now in favor of this agreement and look at the commitments that I have obtained. So I'm going to ask um, uh, you to put it on the agenda for two weeks and uh, I'll give you the, the motion that I'm going to, that, that Needham adopted. Um, Resolved that in the event of ratification of the revi revised Minuteman Regional Vocation District Agreement as approved by the Regional School Committee on March 11th, and in the event of notice of desire to withdraw by one or more members of the district given within one year of the effective date of the revised agreement, the Board of Selectmen will not place a warrant article disapproving such withdrawal in a town meeting warrant unless required by law and will oppose such a disapproval article or motion in any event. And so the new agreement says, if someone says I want to leave, then there have to be eight or nine towns who have to vote, actively vote no. And if you do nothing, it's as good as a yes. And so what we'd be committing to is if, if we take this vote in two weeks is to say, to give everyone a pass and not uh, take that vote. It extends to us as well. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure that they've really thought that all the way through, but it's there. That's, well, I'm not going to discuss it with you now since the chairman's going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. So that uh, I see Kevin. I don't know if you, you don't want us to discuss oh, it. Oh, I don't no, know. We no, can, no, please. I, 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 would just, I, I, I would like to ask this question. Currently 16 members. Yeah. Right. Let me say six of them want to get out of it right now. One, six of them are against this. In fact, six of them do want to get out of it. Is it really six? Uh, look, let's see. The, at the, right, but, and, go, here's my question. So we say, okay, we won't stop you from getting out of it. Next year, there's now 10 members. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pay more again anyhow. How do, we, how do we protect ourselves by saying, we'll let you go? That's true, but the, the members who are looking to get out are those who have fewer than five students each because the five, you pay a minimum of a five student assessment under the, the new agreement. Right. So I think the estimate that was thrown around today was uh, the best guess is that it's probably something like 30 students that would be lost, I, I think was the estimate. I think it's a little more, but yeah. It, yeah, it, it's, it's a little tough to, tough to because one th but right. it's, it's small numbers because these, these are the, the towns that send one or two students each. Right. They don't have a lot of skin in the game, and some of them actually said, we're willing to get out, come in as an out of district, um, you know, an out of district uh, tuition enrollee, and part of what's being done right now is uh, some work to ensure that uh, out of district students would have to pay a capital assessment. That's not all finalized yet, but that's something we don't have today. So, do so all districts have to also pay for a minimum of five students, even if they only send one or two? Uh, under the new agreement, if, if, if all the towns pass it, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <clears throat> you should know, too, that one other undercurrent of the discussion today is that the clock is ticking right now on the renovation project. And um, by August, there has to be some final um, sense of how large a school um, Minuteman is looking to build. And right now, the school committee there has, has said that they would, um, <clears throat> they were scoping it at up to 800 students. There seems to be a consensus around the table now that 
that's that's too large and that that really the, the Minuteman School Committee has to really get real and, and there's a lot of talk of right sizing the school both of these things are happening at the same time but that's why it's important that um, the agreement be passed in all all 16 communities and if what it takes is making sure that those communities that have such a small enrollment you know have that assurance they they can get out if they say yes to the agreement it's probably worth it at that point and I will say that also in along that line if you look at the votes that the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee in town meeting took a few years ago there are a series of things that we said you know must be a part of any new school building the regional agreement does take care of some of those it gives us weighted voting maybe not exactly the way we want the right to exit not exactly the way we want but in my mind good enough some of the things that it doesn't yet cover are um, out of making sure that out of district out of district students pay capital costs but that is a separate thing that cannot be achieved by this regional agreement anyway so there's there's still many 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 miles to go and not only that even if we approve it and 14 other towns approve it then we have to go back to Wayland and convince them to take another vote and actually approve it so would they have to call a special town meeting to do that they would and if we allow district other districts out the state still has to approve their withdrawal as well and there's a lot of discussion today about the potential of some of the towns that are leaning that direction getting contingent approval and would a town have to pay for five students even if they send none in the new the state says no you I can't so, leave yeah. they just said yeah. we're not sending you anybody yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is why so yeah I don't know how I'd vote if I <laughs> <were there. laughs> uh, yeah so I'm hoping that we can put this on an agenda for two weeks okay uh, yeah okay well thank you very much for all of your work on this uh, uh, and yeah. Mr. Chaplain of course Adam goes to more meetings than I do on this one <laughs> um, thank you sorry to throw off our regular schedule but back Mr. Greeley yeah move to reconsider chairman uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to start by congratulating Doug on his alma mater winning both the men's and the women's yes. NCAA basketball championships has that ever been done before Why, yes, by, UConn. by UConn before <laughs> I thought, he'd, I thought he'd know that. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank but you. now you're really in a state with great champions. You know that. Uh, but no, that's quite an achievement. Uh, I have to apologize. Next week on Patriots Day, I'll be in New York City, which doesn't celebrate it uh, on business. So I'm sorry I won't. Although I'm not quite in marching in the parade shape yet. Uh, my final uh, piece of business is I would just like to remind people that on April 27th, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the sister cities, Nago Kikio and Arlington. At five o'clock out here, there'll be a bench dedication to the sister city relationship. And in memory of Dick Smith, who was so vital in the start of this, uh, bringing it to this Board of Selectmen, which then started that, uh, that Board of Selectmen 30 years ago. Uh, at six o'clock, there'll be a dinner, and the dinner will be followed by entertainment which is the Nagoka Kyo students uh, doing some dance and singing. And then um, we're going to do a repeat of the 100th anniversary show. And it's worth it to pay the $50 per ticket to come and watch Adam Chapdelaine singing Mac the Knife. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, you can get tickets through the Selectman's office. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Ms. Bond. Um, just one piece of new business. Uh, I know Mr. Carroll was um, telling us about a uh, town meeting warrant article review precinct meeting. I just want to let everybody know that precinct 8, 10, and 12 and 14 on Sunday, April 27th in the early afternoon at the Arlington Senior Center will also be having um, their town warrant article review. I just came on to work with my partner in precinct 12. Um, after the election because I didn't want to do anything before then so we'll be getting the word out through you know uh, the bracket PTO newsletter to their parents just as an FYI getting it out to news media um, I also know that precinct 4 is having a similar meeting as they did last year and West Vale and Cl Clarissa Rowe are, are responsible for that and I don't want to make the announcement of the date because I think I know when it is but I don't want to um, miss Q and I think I saw precinct 20 um, also was planning on having that so if, if it's appropriate and if it hasn't already happened is this something that we could post perhaps on the town website 
You, you read my mind. Oh. Uh, we sent out an email to town meeting members today asking them for all oh, of the precinct okay. meetings, some of the ones that you just listed, mm -hmm. uh, and um, with a deadline of tomorrow. So either tomorrow or the next day, we'll be sending out an email notice okay, with a listing of all the precinct meetings. Uh, and I, I'll check. Well, when we send out the notice, it'll automatically be on the home page, so it'll be on the website as well. Okay, great. Thank you. That's Thank it. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. I'll just say that I believe that Precinct 21 may be joining uh, <laughs> for the first time with a, one of those existing ones. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kira. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I did attend the precinct meeting yesterday. It was, it was very uh, useful, and it's, I don't know if I can make all these. It's helpful if one of us is able to, to cover um, each of these because there are sometimes questions about the board's votes, and it's helpful to have that forum. Um, so thank you for putting that out. That's becoming a very busy day. <laughs> last day of April vacation. Um, I wanted to note that uh, last week um, I had the opportunity to attend the um, Senior Volunteers Lunch. This is an annual um, lunch that is put on in honor of um, everyone who volunteers on behalf <clears throat> of the seniors in town. Um, I want to say that, um, you know, Bill Murphy does a great job. You know, that was actually one of our CDBG um, uh, items here that we improved tonight. Um, Susan Karp, our director of COA, told, told me that uh, we have over 10,000 hours a year of, of volunteer service that's um, devoted to our seniors. So that is money very well spent. It's, it's a huge multiplier. Um, so I just wanted to recognize Bill and all of the uh, volunteers who were there and those who weren't able to make it, um, as well as some of the staff. Uh, Mr. Flanagan was there and uh, uh, Ms. Malloy and um, a few other, uh, quite a few people from Health and Human Services as well. Um, <clears throat> last um, Tuesday, um, I took a personal day. I went into uh, MAPC had a uh, conference called uh, "Sparking New Ideas." It was a. <laughs> this shows you where my life has gone. It was a full day conference devoted to parking, <laughs> which was act absolutely fascinating. I have to say, <laughs> it actually it really was. Um, unbeknownst to me, I went in and Arlington was very well represented. Um, Laura Wiener, Joey Glushko, and uh, Ted Fields from the planning department. Corey Rateau was there from the police department, as well as uh, Charlie Kalauskas, who chairs our um, master plan committee, and uh, Rachel Stark, who's the head of walking in Arlington. And I'll just say for the record, it was a free con conference. It was n no cost to the town or to any of the attendees. I wanted to make sure when I read out all of the staff who were in at the conference. Um, Actually, one of the presenters was Lisa Robertson from um, Nelson Nygaard, who had just been with us the night before. So she had a very long a week. Um, this, was, this was fascinating. We got to hear from um, uh, Donald Shoup, and I think the, my colleagues will remember that uh, when Mr. Minoyan was with us, he, he came in at one point was telling us about Donald Shoup's book, The High Cost of Free Parking. So this guy was like the parking god for for the, the country. I mean, he seemed to have a bunch of groupies following him around. Um, it was a, a fascinating um, talk. And what um, Professor Shoup, he really put out three theses. Um, one around uh, the need to manage parking demand through pricing, and one around reinvesting in commercial districts with your parking revenue, which were very consistent with what we had heard the night before in our center parking study. Um, a lot of talk about the parking benefit um, districts. Um, so I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to talk more about that when we bring that back up on the agenda. And I just note the, the third lesson that he asked the communities who are attending to, um, to think about was around easing or removing off-street parking um, requirements in certain situations. Now some of these apply more to like the sprawl malls and such and other, other communities, but um, when uh, Mr. Burnt, well, Mr. Michael Byrne and Cal Kowalski did their zoning presentation for town meeting members a few weeks ago. They showed some examples as well, and this has come up in the master plan around the land use. Um, so it, this was fascinating, um, the, and I could go on for a long time. I mean, I, I unfortunately, I tortured my family with this, and they could care less. Um, last thing I would say, though, is that um, there was a lot of technology on display there, and a lot of the new smart technology. Um, one of the highlights was sitting with Officer Rateau. We went to a technology talk, and there was a case study from Salem. And the gentleman who I think had been the, the city manager there was complaining about this meter that they had had in their parking lot and how it would never work, and people were so frustrated. Educated people were would, would, would just driven to tears. He had it 
X'd up with you know, the bills went here, the credit card went here, and the coins went there, and it never worked. He said, so finally we yanked it out, and we put in a solution that solved all of our problems, and he put a picture up on, on, the, um, on the board, and didn't Corey and I almost fall out of our seats? It was a picture of the ones that we have in, in our lots that cause us so much pain, and we, we just looked at each other and shook our heads. But there's a lot out there, and I think this is going to be exciting as we go down this, this, uh, this road with the uh, parking center study. And so that's all I have on new business, other than to wish everyone, all of our residents, this week may be celebrating uh, Passover or uh, Easter Triduum. Um, you know, a restful and, and reflective time with their families. Um, and uh, remind the kids, you only have three days till vacation, and we hope that all of our families who are traveling uh, do so safely. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. I don't know how you fit it all in. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't, I only have one thing, actually. I was reading the uh, Boston Magazine today, and an article came up about a company called Wicked Sober that was started by an Arlington resident to help those who are suffering from addiction, um, drug, alcohol, to find the proper care they need. Um, it, it, I highly recommend reading it. Um, they're, they're doing fabulous work and I, um, I commend, and I was happy to see that we had a local connection to it. it um, really hit home, especially, you know, we, we hear all these horrible stories every day of people and family suffering. So um, it, it was a good read, and again, that's Wicked Sober, and it was um, started by the Duggins, who um, um, I, I grew up with Mike um, a little bit. He was a few years older, but um, I'm glad he's doing well, um, as the story notes, and I am, um, I just wanted to share that with everyone. So that being said. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.